Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to the Grow Tent, everybody. You have found the best growing channel on YouTube, man. The place where we simplify the approach for you so everyone can learn how to grow. We make it so simple, even I can understand. So I'm going to listen and learn right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Grow Tent. I hope you guys have all had a fantastic week and have been having a fantastic Saturday. And I know you guys will see this Sunday, so I hope you're having a great Sunday. Well, I hope you had a great Saturday yesterday, too. Uh, guys, we've got a really, really good episode for you today. Today, we're going to talk about what happens whenever your plant starts to run low on food and how you can catch back up with it safely without burning your plants up, because as we know, even if they're low on food, if you give them too much food at once, you start burning up the tips of the leaves, then your leaf tips get all burnt up, and if you do a really bad job of it, it actually starts running up the edges of the leaves, and that's whenever you've really done something. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how you can avoid it and what's the best way to catch back up on the food without doing that to your plant. And we have to separate it because we have to talk about uh, how you would fix it in veg versus how you would fix it in flower because it is there is some slight differences to it and the differences and the choices you make could end up saving your plant or hurting your plant. So. We're going to talk about that today, but first, as always, guys, it's the intro. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, watch the full thing. If you want to hang out with GT more, you can always come on over and hang out at WTTGT. Uh, I'm sure you can find it uh, if you use uh, methods to uh, look stuff up. Uh, you can check that out, and you can hang out with me more. There's lots of awesome benefits over there. Yep, uh, that's all we're going to say about that. Uh, guys, also, uh, I think that's enough, right? Right, right. Let's you want to get today's episode started. I mean, I do. You guys ready? And we're back. We're back, everybody. All right. So I thought it was. I got this question in an email. How I get most of them. Uh, actually, I get a lot from like YouTube comments, but I do also kind of a big dumb idiot. I also put my email up on the internet like that right there. Just to the grow ten at gmail dot com. That's the number two. The grow ten at gmail dot com. If you have any questions, you can just send them to me. I might even uh, respond back to you. I, because I am a big dumb idiot that puts his email online, I do get quite a few uh, email questions a day because not only have I been doing it lately, I've been doing it for 10 years of doing the show, so all the old videos have uh, my email in them. Well, not all of them. I do forget to mention it every once in a while. Uh, but So I do still get a lot of emails. All right, so question. What do you do if you start to run low on food? The first question is, why were you running low on food? Maybe you were stuck in your uh, pot for a little bit extra time because your flower, you know, you weren't ready, you know, if you had multiple tents, but you weren't quite ready to jump into uh, your flower tent yet, so you got backed up in veg, and they started, they were in their pots a little bit too long, and they started to run out of food, or maybe you just forgot to feed them, uh, or maybe the soil that you had was running low on food, or. You know, it could be anything. Maybe your plant is eating more than uh, normal. You weren't used to it, so the plant started running out of food before you noticed. It happens. It does happen. Generally, everyone's on the overfeeding side, but I actually have seen kind of this transition to where people are underfeeding, just like they're underwatering. And uh, I think if we talk about things enough, people start falling the other direction like oh you know I'm too scared to water so then they end up underwatering which you know on these plants they're they like to live a happy life right here in the middle they don't like either the extremes they don't like too much food they don't like too little food they don't like too much water they don't like too little water they're happy right here in the middle just like their pH they don't like the pH too high they don't like the pH too low where they like it right there in the middle uh, so this plant is very happy in the middle so it doesn't like it when you don't give it enough but it also doesn't like if you give it too much so the first things first, if we are in veg, you have your plant in veg, and we're like, oh crap, we're kind of running low on food. You have a couple different options. Uh, mainly we're going to talk about if you're growing in soil. We'll also talk about if you're growing in cocoa. Uh, if you're growing in uh, any kind of hydro system, just switch your water out, add some more food to it. You shouldn't be running out of food in hydro. Uh, so it's not really a, a kind of an issue because that's instant. You know, I mean, that's in, literally instant food. You add the water... They got food, but if you're in soil, it's a little bit, a little bit trickier. So then we have to decide what kind of food you're using. So if you're going to go into in any kind of like pre-amended soil, like box farms, or uh, or bio, if you go to any one of those, some of those brands, 
like foxworms, have food already in them. So you can literally just take your plant, as long as you haven't done too much damage, like you really ran out of food, the whole plant turned yellow, and then started uh, turning brown and dying off. As long as you haven't done anything like that, you can just literally up-pot them. Because whenever you put them into soil that has food in it, pre-amended soil, like uh, happy frog, ocean forest, strawberry fields, those are all fox farms soils that have food already in there. That's why they're more expensive, because they have the food. It's in the computer. Oh, it's in the computer. No, it's in the soil. And uh, it, the food's already in there. That's why they're pricey. That's why you get, you know, medium-sized bags that are, you know, expensive. Uh, they're not as cheap as just dirt. Because they've already pre the soil in there, or uh, pre the food in the soil. The problem is that if you're just running a little bit low on food, you can transplant them, no big deal. It takes the plant about a week to start breaking everything down to start getting the food. Now, if you were to, you ran it really low on soil, maybe you were on vacation or you just didn't notice that it was uh, a light bag of soil and the plant is starting to, to show uh, deficiencies because you've run it so low on food, uh, you can kind of do a multi-step progress here. I would still recommend transplanting into fresh soil to get that slow release uh, of food trickling in. Uh, but you can also just do a regular feeding. And if you're going to do the transplant and the soil uh, and you were super low on food, you would just, I, what I like to do is what I call a transitional week nutrient feeding. So if we're in veg, I like to just do an even even amounts of all three. So if like, let's say you're using the general, there's so many variables to this, I'm trying guys. Uh, Let's say you're using the general hydroponics three part because that's what we always use because it's the most readily available. I'm just going to do an equal amount of all three. So the grow, the uh, the micro, and the bloom. I'm just going to do like four milliliters per gallon of each one of them. Uh, and the reason this is is because I want to build that nutrient base back up, but I want to build it back up with all three. Because uh, generally if you're going to be feeding in veg while you're using soil, generally you're going to be towards the end of your veg cycle because at the beginning the soil still had a bunch of food in it. See the, see the logic? So uh, if you're towards the end of veg anyway, I'm going to go with a transitional week nutrient feeding which is uh, four, of, four milliliters per gallon of the grow, four milliliters per gallon of the micro, and four milliliters per gallon of the bloom. Uh, just to get a nice even spread back into the soil. You should only have to do this one time because after a week, the food, the plant's gonna be able to start, break, will be breaking down the food that's already in the soil. So it helps you out. If you were growing in an inert cocoa, uh, I'm still gonna do the four milliliters per gallon of each of them. Uh, but generally you're gonna have to feed two weeks in a row instead of doing our normal feed, water, water, feed schedule. We're gonna do two feedings in a row if, we, if we're falling behind. But as long as you stick to that four milliliters per gallon of each, uh, you're just gonna put you right around the 500 to 600 ppm mark. And doing it that way, if you're just feeding those those five to 600 ppms, you won't go overboard with the food uh, to where you start burning up the leaf tips, even if you have to feed them two weeks in a row. Uh, you don't need to do that in soil because it'll already start breaking down the nutrients in the soil. If you're in like an inert row like the cocoa, I'll do two feedings in a row to catch them back up. And what you'll find is, after you do those two feedings in a row, you've really uh, caught them back up and you can start doing that feed, water, water, feed schedule and jump right back on track. Now, it gets a little more complicated when you're in flower. Well, why GT? Why is it, I don't understand why is it more complicated? Because generally, you've already transplanted them into their final pots. Um, and once again, you're going to be at least halfway through flower before you start noting this. Eh, maybe not halfway. Maybe let's say you got a light bag of uh, ocean forest or strawberry fields and you have to start. You're like, oh crap, it's the beginning or middle of week three. And I'm already noticing like the little brown spots pop up on the leaves. The little like rusty colored spots pop up on the leaves. You're like, oh crap, it's way too early for the fade. Um, you know, we're only in week three of flower. What do I do? I can't transplant. We're trapped under a scrog net. So transplanting is off the table. What do I do? Uh, there is a, there's a few tricks because since we can't transplant because we're locked in under a scrog net or, you know, you generally it's just not a good idea to transplant in flower anyway because the tops of the plants get heavy. You end up breaking a lot of branches. 
because of the weight and shift them around, they'll actually split down the main stem, which is fine in veg. They're very fixable. But you don't want to do that in flower. You don't want to cause that kind of damage to the plant in flower. It's already going through a hard enough time trying to double in size and then transition from growing into bulking. So the biggest thing here is whenever we get into flower, we have a couple little tricks. Do I have a water bottle? I do. Uh, so if I am noticing, now it depends on what I'm noticing, uh, will depend on how I attack this. So if I am in the beginning or middle of week three and the whole plant is starting to yellow. I'm not talking about the new growth, okay? So whenever you go through the stretch, which is weeks one through three of flower, the very top of the plant, all the new growth coming out will be a lighter shade of green to even a shade of uh, like a yellow, like a yellowish green. Uh, that's just the new growth. There's rapid expansioning happening in the plant. And so a lot of people see that lightening of the tops because it's growing so fast and they will think that that is the plant running out of food. It is not. That is just the plant going through the stretch. It is having a rapid expansion of growth. So what you see is the, the tops get a little bit lighter than they normally would have. And it's only because the plant's growing so fast going through the stretch that you actually see that. But if you just leave it alone for a few days, those tops will green right back up. That's not what we're talking about. So when we're talking about the plants running out of something, it actually cascades across the whole plant. It's not just the very tops of the new stuff. It'll, it'll actually cascade across all of the fan leaves almost overnight. It might, it might stop, start at the, like the top half of the plant and then cascade through the rest of it. That's what we're talking about when the plant's running out of something. So if it's running out of nitrogen, it'll generally turn that kind of like a yellow cascade will fall across the whole plant. It's easily fixable. Even if you just watered three or four days ago and you come in and you notice this, you're not going to hurt anything if you feed it, okay? Don't be like, okay, i got to wait. You know, the plant's not going to need water for another five or six days. And I know you guys don't want to overwater, but what you have to remember is overwatering is something, is it is a chronic problem, it's not a volume problem. So it would be something you have to do over and over and over and over and over again. So uh, overwatering is something it's like if you did it, you know, you were only supposed to water once a week and you've been watering three times a week and you did that for a month. That's overwatering. Uh, on the other hand, let's say you watered the plant and you're like, oh crap, I was supposed to feed this week and I didn't. I would wait two days and then I would just make my food up and pour it in the plant. That is not overwatering, okay? Uh, oh, now, if you did that every week where you're like, oh, I watered and I got water again. I watered and I water again. I watered and I water again. If you did that every week, that would be overwatering. But when you have to just do it once, like if you're fixing a problem or something, that's not a big deal, okay? It rains all the time on these plants in the wild, and it rains all day and all night sometimes, and the plants don't show signs of overwatering. Uh, one, because they got a bunch of ground that they can stretch out into, and two is because, you know, that's just the way it works. That's why these plants don't grow very well in Seattle, because it rains all the freaking time. But places where it doesn't do that, where it just, you know, it could rain a lot and the plants are still okay. It's just not a volume issue. It's something that has to happen all the time, all the time, all the time. Um, so whenever we get back to it, we're like, okay, it's easy. I'll just get my, my, uh, my grow or, uh, that has a, you know, a bunch of nitrogen in it, or I could grab even the micro bottle. Let's say you were out of grow, you can grab the micro bottle. It's got a bunch of nitrogen in it too. And you can literally just put, you know, six, seven milliliters per gallon in a single gallon of water, because generally this doesn't happen, you know, tent wide. It's generally a single plant kind of plant issue. So you can just make up a gallon of water, put seven, eight milliliters of uh, the grow in there, or even the micro will work, put it in there, stir it up, pour it in the plant. Remember, you're just trying to slow this down. Uh, it's not a, generally something where you're like, it's a super big emergency. Just get some uh, the stuff it's looking for in there and it will stop that. Uh, the next part is, well, what if, it's doing that thing where you talked about earlier where it's got all the little spots all over the leaves, like little rust-colored spots. These are gen that's, uh, Generally, that is the plant pulling phosphorus and potassium out of the leaves. That's what it shows up as. And that is the earliest sign of the fade that we have. So actually one of the first things you'll see. Uh, this is also easily fixable. You can do it with two different things. It's either you grab your bloom nutrient, if you're growing general hydroponics, that's it is the pink bottle. Uh, or you can grab, oh, fuck. Or you can grab a PK booster. Please be careful with this. If you're going to grab a PKE booster, I'm going to teach you a trick on how to use it right now to slow down the fade or to stop it in its tracks. Uh, we've talked about this before. If you go back to my video week four, 
flower, I think. It's just an individual. I did a whole series on individual, what I do during the, the different individual weeks. Uh, I think YouTube actually deleted my week five flower video. I don't know if they did that a few years ago. But you can grab one of these uh, water bottles right here. Let's say you just you just fed and you've got the single plant and you don't need to make up a bunch of food. You can actually just grab a water bottle. Obviously it needs water in it. This doesn't have any water in it. But uh, And I will just put one milliliter of PK Booster in here for a normal size plant. So, you know, you get your three to four foot tall plants. I will just put one milliliter of PK Booster in here. It is extremely con concentrated, guys. You do not need a lot of it. So I put one milliliter of PK Booster in here. I will shake it up with the water, and then you can just take it and dump that in that singular plant, and that will tide you over enough until you can get to a normal feeding with your regular nutrients, and it'll be just fine. But that little trick right there will hold you over until you can get it in there. Now, one thing about it is if you do get those little spots on your plant, those little rusty covered spots all over your fan leaves, nothing you're going to do is, is going to fix that. What we are trying to do is slow it down or stop it. And uh, the damage has already been done. Those cells are destroyed because the plant stripped the nutrients out of there and those parts of the, the fan leaf actually died. What we're trying to do is stop it from doing any further damage by adding the thing that it's looking for back into its soil. Um, I think I think we kind of covered all the bases, right? Um, remember guys, the cow mag is weeks one through, week one of uh, veg through the end of week three flower. After the end of week three flower, you switch over to your mag sulfur product, uh, botanicator, sweet, flora, nectar, bud candy, any of those, they all work. Epsom salt, that also works. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, yeah, I think that kind of covers everything. Uh, if you're doing the cow mag, uh, you're doing the cow mag any of the times so you need to catch them all, catch up on it. This pretty plant size of in it. On some of my really big mother plants, I'll give them 15 milliliters per gallon of it without a problem. Uh, if I'm in flower, the later parts of flower, weeks four through week seven of flowers, whenever you give your mag sulfur product. If I need to catch up on that, that, you know, the sky is kind of the limit with Max Sulfur products. It's not a high PPM product. At, at 8 milliliters per gallon, it's only like 180 to 200 PPM. So, I mean, you can really hammer it if you're looking at the plant and it needs mag. You don't want to run out of mag or your sulfate in the end weeks of flower. And there's been plenty of times where I've done, well, I've had really big plants, but I've done 20 milliliters. 25 milliliters per gallon of it. You go through it pretty quickly, uh, but on your bigger plants, you don't want to run out of. You really don't want to run out of mag uh, during the last parts of flower. So, I uh, hope you guys all have a great weekend. I think we kind of covered all the topics. This is a slightly longer video, but I uh, hope you guys all have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next time. GT.